Most developers never make any money from the things they build. And it's usually not because the code isn't good enough. It's because the idea wasn't focused, the problem wasn't clear, the execution lacked direction, or maybe too much time was spent on trying to learn too much. When I first started, I'd build cool features with zero idea who it was for. No marketing, no monetization plan. But profitable apps don't just happen. They're the result of being intentional, having a plan, solving a real problem, and learning the things you need to know fast. So if your goal is to build apps that provide value and earn money, then this video will help to break down exactly how I approach building profitable solo projects, the mindset you need, how to define success, how to build, market, and iterate in a lean way. And I'll share the exact tools and tactics I use to help me move faster and smarter. Let's get into it. So let's talk about mindset. Before you write any code, shift your identity from just a developer to a problem solver. That's the biggest mindset shift that separates hobby builders from those who create profitable apps. You're not just writing code or relying on AI for your solutions, but instead you're understanding and solving real problems for your users. That means staying curious, talking to users, and the truth is people will pay good money if you can resolve a pain point, save them time, or even help them make more money. Another big shift? Let go of perfection. If you're waiting until it's polished, you're already too late. Profitable builders ship early, get feedback and improve quickly. Small wins stack up. Finally, treat every project like a learning opportunity. If you consistently provide genuine value, you will stand out as someone who can solve real problems. So many projects fail before they even start, not because they're bad ideas, but because the goals were vague. Build a cool app isn't a goal. You need to provide this goal with more information. For example, I want to build an app that does X to solve Y problem for these users. You need to define three things clearly. Who it's for, what problem you're solving, and what success looks like. Is it revenue, retention, feedback, or better yet, build something that solves your problem, just like I did with Fast Folders. If it helps you, it will help other people. Whether you build an MVP or an SLC, it doesn't matter. Just make sure at launch it can complete the main task that it's made for. You want to ship a version 1 of something complete, not a version 0.1 of something complex. And don't forget constraints. Give yourself a deadline, a scope limit, a focus. It's so easy to overbuild. I find that tighter goals actually unlock more creativity because they keep me honest and moving. Now the fun part, building. To code your own app, you'll need to pick a tech stack, but don't overthink it. Choose one that fits your strengths and your project goals. If you're unsure where to begin, check out roadmap.sh. It's an excellent free resource that lays out learning paths for front-end, back-end, databases and more. It's actively maintained and helps you focus on what matters without getting lost in the weeds. Once you're ready to build, start lean. My MVP is always the simplest version that solves one real problem. I avoid distractions like user authentication or fancy animations, those come later. But even with minimal features, your app should feel intuitive. That's where design makes a huge difference. I'm not a designer, but I still want my projects to feel polished, and that's where Mobbin comes in. Mobbin is a massive library of real-world UI patterns from the best apps out there like Stripe, Notion and Linear. So if I'm building an onboarding flow, a setting screen or even just a login page, I can instantly see what great design looks like and apply it. It helps me build better UI, faster. And it's especially valuable if you're a solo dev without a design background. There's a link below if you want to check it out. One of the biggest productivity unlocks for me has been picking the right tools. These days, being a solo developer doesn't mean doing everything alone. I treat tools like teammates. First off, I use VS Code and Cursor as my go-to IDEs. Cursor especially has been a game changer lately. It brings AI right into the editor, helping me debug, refactor, and even generate code without switching tabs, but use these tools wisely. For fast UI prototyping, I've been using Vercel's V0. You can describe what you want in plain language and it gives you a decent looking React component to start from. It's not perfect, but it saves hours and that matters. Then there's Google Gemini and ChatGPT. I don't just use them to solve bugs. I treat them like mentors. I'll ask them to explain concepts, give me ideas, or even pressure test my own thinking. It's like having a senior dev on standby 24 seven. 
the key is not getting overwhelmed with too many tools, I just focus on a few that genuinely speed me up and remove friction. Used well, these tools make you feel like a team of two, not just one. You could build the most useful app in the world, but if no one knows it exists, it might as well not. That's why I treat marketing as an integral part of the product, not something you sprinkle on at the end. Start by figuring out where your ideal users spend time. Reddit, Twitter, Discord, Indie Hackers, wherever. Don't just drop links, contribute to the conversation. Share lessons learned, give feedback, answer questions. Then, when the moment feels right, introduce your product in a natural way. You'll also need a landing page that converts. The formula is simple but powerful. A clear headline that communicates the value, a subheading that reinforces the problem it solves, and a visual or short video that demonstrates how it works. Add in some early testimonials or reviews to build trust fast, even if it's just feedback from your first 10 users. Speaking of which, don't underestimate the power of a short demo video. Just 30 to 60 seconds can be enough to show off what your app does and why it matters. And remember, your early users are everything. They're not just customers, they're testers, evangelists, and feedback machines. Listen to them, learn from them, and treat them like your founding team. I'll link some useful documents in the description below. Most profitable apps don't take off on version one. It's the second, third, or 10th iteration where things click. So after launch, your job isn't done, it's just beginning. Start by talking to your first users. Ask, what confused you? What did you like and dislike? What would you like to see improved? Prioritize your user feedback by using three simple steps. Frequency. How often your users are mentioning the problem. Feasibility. How difficult is the task? If it's quick and easy, then act on that straight away. Impact. What real value will this bring to your users? Every DM, comment, or email is a mini focus group. When someone takes the time to give feedback, whether it's positive or critical, it's all gold. Take notes, look for patterns, and prioritize the pain points that keep coming up. You don't need to act on everything, but you do need to listen. And the magic happens when you respond publicly. Thank them, because at the end of the day, they are helping you to help them. People remember that. It builds loyalty and momentum in ways that are hard to fake. So keep a tight feedback loop because the best version of your product is the one your users help you build. Iterating isn't glamorous, but it's where profit lives. The builders who listen, learn and adapt, they're the ones who turn side projects into serious income. If you take one thing away from this video, it's this. Profitable apps are built with intention, not just by coding fast, but by focusing on real people clear problems and constant feedback. You don't need to be a genius, you just need a system. Feel free to check out all the useful links in the description below. And if you're curious on how to ship projects faster, then click on this link here. Let me know in the comments what you're building and I'll see you in the next one.